Okay, welcome to day four of Java. We're going to discuss more ways you can change the flow in a Java program. Today we're primarily going to be discussing iteration, which is a technique you can use in your Java programs to repeat things multiple times. So we'll show you more about it now. First, before we get to iteration, I just want to discuss a couple of special symbols, symbols that we use inside Java programming. So, there are some shortcuts you can use when you're programming in Java. And we'll discuss those shortly. Let's open up Eclipse and let's open up a new class and call it loops.java. First, we'll just be discussing incrementation, but eventually we'll get to loops. So let's open up, up Eclipse and start a new class called loops.java. Okay, so you can assign variables values, but you can also increase the value stored inside a variable. So let's say you have a variable in score, let's set it equal to 5. So how do you increase the current value of score by 1? One way is to start off by saying a statement like this, saying score equals score plus 1. But the thing is, programmers do this a lot. Like, if you're trying to increase someone's score, you do the statement a lot. So programmers like to shorten it. And Java has one shortcut that's basically equivalent to this. And you can write score equals score plus one as this. Score plus plus. Then, now, when you print out score, then, when you print out score, then you will automatically increase the value in score by one. And just like score plus plus increases the value by one, score minus minus decreases the value by one. So you can run this, and eventually you'll find out that score is decreased by one. Okay. Those are what are called the increment and decrement operators. There's also other operators that let you increase or change the value stored in the variable by a given amount. So for example, if you want to increase your score by five, like if you were playing a video game and you wanted to, you won a five point, or you killed a five point enemy or something like that. So let's say you increase the score to increase the score by five. You could say score equals score, score plus five, but that takes a while. So a faster way to do it is to say score plus equals to five. It's just shorthand for the same thing, and then now score equals ten. Similarly, minus equals works the same way. Times equals is multiplies the current value of score by 5. So you get 25. And divide equals divides the current value of score by 5. And you'll get the value 1. So, yeah. These operators are known as the assignment operators. And they let you like change the value of a variable and assign it. It's rather interesting what you can do with them. Yeah, and for Boolean, there's also operators that are and equals and or, or equals. So we don't need to go over them in too much depth, but for example, something like this. Let's say and equals false, then you could say Boolean b equals false, then b equals b and equals true. So if false and b is equals to false and true. And you don't see these that much, but once in a while they do happen. Okay. So, and you can do the same thing with and equals and or equals. They're both pretty similar. You don't see this that much, but you do see this once in a while. Okay, so those are the special symbols we'll be using. And we'll be using the syntax a lot for iteration. Because iteration involves a lot of increasing, changing states. Okay, 
So now, now let's move on to the interesting topic of iteration. And to show you how iteration works, we're going to write the same program in multiple ways. We're going to write a program that prints out a countdown, starting from 10 and going to 0. I and iteration can do this really effectively because otherwise you'd have to write a 10 statements, print out 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But with iteration, you can actually do it fairly compactly, as you can see in these two examples. The second one is an error. It shouldn't work. But iteration can still achieve these fairly compactly. So the while statement works as you'd expect it to. So while the statement inside this parentheses is true, then while the statement inside this parentheses is true, then the loop, the elements inside the loop block keep on running over and over again until the statement inside the conditional evaluates default. So we'll start off by we can actually delete all of this experimenting with increments and we will start off by saying saying an int count and saying that you start off with the count of 10 and then we want to have a countdown okay but we want to have a countdown but we want to stop the countdown once we reach zero so we can actually say we want to keep counting down as long as we haven't reached zero. So we can say while count is greater than zero, keep counting. Okay, now we can actually print out the value of count. So let's print out, so first it'll print out 10. Then it'll still print out 10 because we haven't changed this count. So right now as this code will written, it'll keep on printing out 10. But to actually make it work, after that we decrease count by one using the decrement operator. So now, first time it prints out 10, second time it prints out 9, 8, 7, 6. You can actually trace this all out in a whiteboard if you want, but the end result is that you have this whole countdown printed out. So, yeah, now we've completely printed out a countdown with a while loop. If you didn't have this decrement, then we'd have an infinite while loop. Like, it would print out 10 forever, but nothing would change. You'd never this would never evaluate to false. So make sure the conditional inside the parentheses eventually evaluates to false. Great. Okay. So you can press the pause to terminate it. Okay. So now that is the basic essence of while loops. They're very versatile. In the sense that you can adapt to many different situations. Often inside games, you can say, like, you can say something like, while you're not dead, you can have a variable called not dead. So while you're not dead, and then play, something like that. You do stuff, do stuff while playing. So, yeah, while loops are pretty interesting in that regard. Okay, so that was the main that that was the main concept of while loops. Now let's move on to for loops. For loops are slightly different. They contain more parts, but they're kind of more specialized towards repeating things a certain number of times. Let's say you want to repeat something ten times. Yeah, so we can actually do the execute the countdown with the for loop too. So inside the for loop, you, inside the parentheses, you have three statements. First, you have an initialization. So you say something like int c equals 10. Then you can say you want c. Then you have a condition. So you want this loop to execute as long as c is greater than 0. OK. And then after that, after the condition, you have a change. So this is what you want to change every time. Kind of like how we did count minus minus here. It's kind of parallel. So you want C to go down every time. Okay, so now let's try printing this out. System.out.println C. And there's nothing else inside the statement. So the for loop is actually slightly shorter. Let's see. So now the while loop prints it out correctly. So does the for loop. They both print out a countdown. The for loop is slightly shorter. And when you want to repeat something exactly a certain number of times, then the for loop is usually a better choice. Okay, so I think that pretty much goes over while loops and for loops.
yeah, I'd like you guys to try one more example on your own. So, you can have someone's name as characters, as a character array. Oh wait, sorry, we haven't gone over that yet. Never mind. We'll save that example for another day. Okay, so yeah, that's the idea of for loops that work. And now we're just gonna show you some project related to for loops and while loops. So there's this project called Guess My Number. That's the first mini project we'd like you to try. So you ask someone to pick a number from one to one hundred, and then if they pick it, then you tell them whether it's too high or too low. So you could approach that using if else statements, and then you ask them to try again. So that kind of repeats. So that would be a for loop, and then a for loop or a while loop, and then essentially once you're done with the pro, once you're done with the program, once they find it, you can check that with an if statement. Then you tell them how many tries it took. So it's yeah, it's an interesting program in that regard. You'll be able to. It's almost fun to play it, to see how quickly you can guess a number. Okay, so that's one option. And then, yeah, I don't think we'll get through both of them, so we're probably going to have to choose one. The second game involves the random numbers we were talking about. So, I want you to make a board game where your character starts at position zero. And every time you roll the dice, you move forward that number of spaces, but there's some special rules involved, and if you land on a multiple of 5, you go back 5. If you land on a multiple of 13, you go back all the way to 0. So, you'd probably implement this using a for loop or a while loop, and then, because you want to keep repeating, and you want to use some if-else statements to check if you're a multiple of 5 or 13. Okay, so, we'll leave this to you. We'd advise you to start off with a flowchart or something before actually drawing and we'll actually we can diagram some stuff out on the whiteboard but we want you guys to do at least one of these finish actually yeah I want you guys to finish both of these projects guess my number and roll the dice for homework we won't really assign you much homework other than that we want you to read the chapters we went over today which are chapter six and seven yeah but other than that no homework. You can also try doing the exercises on the site other than these, but they're optional. So thank you for coming today. We hope you enjoyed it.